Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to do a short little tutorial in Photoshop where I'm going to show you guys how you can colorize a black and white photograph. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, well, we're in uh, Photoshop as you can see and I started up a new image and what I did is I made sure that this will be a colored image. Okay. The problem is if you load up a black and white image, it's going to assume that you're working in black and white and it's going to be hard to pick colors uh, unless you apply an RGB mode. So what I did is I just said uh, file new and I made sure it's RGB. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to file and uh, place embedded and I'm going to look for my uh, rose right there. That's the one I want to use. Hit enter and I can get rid of this background right now. Hit delete. So this is what we're going to work with right now. What I want to do is color this obviously, but I want to do this in layers. So we have a non-destructive workflow and I can change things afterwards. Okay. So I need to make my initial selection based on this guy. And what I'm going to do is take my quick selection tool right there. I'm going to set that to about 30 or so. Let's see. Yep. Pretty close. And we're going to start to select the area outside of our rows. Okay. And there we go. That was pretty quick. We're going to hit Q on our keyboard. And as we do so, it will show us exactly what has been selected and what has not been selected. You can see that this is a pretty good selection, tiny areas up here and down there, but keep in mind, everything is going to be colorized here. So it shouldn't be an issue. Now, depending on your subject, you need to spend enough time on this to make it look okay. All right. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit Q on a keyboard. I'm going to go up to select and mask, and we're going to refine the selection a little bit. So you can play with this transparency setting and I'm going to leave this somewhere around here. And then what you can do is set a feather, which will basically take a little bit more liberty in the edges here to kind of blur them out. And that's usually enough. Okay. And if not, you can go in and take these brushes right here to brush over the edge areas that you want refined. Okay. But I'm okay with this. So I'll hit Q one more time. Yeah. Happy with it. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take a color brush in a new layer because we want this one to stay intact new layer. Take a uh, brush right there, nice and big and go in and take a green color for our background. And we're basically just going to paint the whole thing green. Okay. Doesn't look realistic at all, obviously. However, what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the blend mode and we're going to change that to color. And as we do that, we'll also go in and tweak down the opacity a little bit. Now, depending on how far you want to go, you can bring it way down or somewhere, let's say close to 70%. I think this one is okay. All right. Now we're going to create a new layer and this time around, we're going to use the existing selection and we're going to invert it. Okay. So we're going to go to select inverse. And now we have our flower selected instead of our background. Okay. We're basically going to repeat the process. So we're going to go in and take a red color in this case, way up red, or maybe even a little bit pink ish. And that's where the creative Liberty comes in and you can just go in and paint the whole thing. There we go. Once again, we're going to go into our blend mode. We're going to change that to color and then we're going to play with that opacity once again not go crazy on pushing it down too much. And I'm wondering whether red would be better. So let's hit control Z to go back. And let's try red instead. Hang on red. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Very, very red. All right. So let's see color and we're going to go in and we're going to play with that opacity. That looks very nice. Now, if this is not the effect that you want, because you want a different type of red, you can go into color and for example, um, use multiply, right? Which will give you this effect. Now I don't like that. So I'm going to go back one. I'm happy with this. We're going to go in to, uh, deselect to turn off that selection. This is pretty crisp, but if you want to make it a little bit more special, what you can do is select all three, 
right click go to merge layers so you got one layer going on there and then what you can do is you can go in and add a blur now we already have a blur in the green area there but what you can do is go to uh, filter and we're going to go to our blur gallery to tilt shift and there you go now you don't want this effect to be too much but i'm going to push this up a little bit push this down I want this obviously in the center of my flower and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to tone down that blur effect quite a bit and uh, it should be maybe one or two pixels that's it okay I'm happy with this so I'm going to click on OK and this will just give you that little bit of a depth uh, effect or what they call in photography bouquet effect um, with the focus on the center of the flower okay now, um, the only thing left is for me to show you the before and after. So uh, hang on. Well guys, and there you have it. There is our flower, okay? So um, like I said, this is a very basic and simple example, but once you have that technique down, you can have a lot of fun, okay? So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Uh, if you are not subscribed yet, please do, so you don't miss out on future videos. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.